I got the call to take in a three month old. A three month old failure to thrive. And when I saw her, she was tiny, super, super tiny, super sick, and uh, three months old and six pounds. She had been starved for a period of time. She was dehydrated. Had she not come to medical attention or come to the hospital when she did, um, she would have had days to live. She was living with her biological parents in a non-operational trailer that was parked outside of a home. The trailer had no electricity, uh, no running water. Uh, Paige had no place to sleep. She was sleeping in a urine-soaked car seat inside of the trailer. Paige's dad would actually put alcohol in Paige's bottle to try to get her to go to sleep faster and would also blow marijuana smoke directly into her face um, for the same reason, because she was fussy and hungry and crying and he wanted her to just go to sleep. The officers noticed that she had a rash that was covering almost her entire body. She, you could see all of her bones. There was just no fat on her body whatsoever. They took custody of her and she was eventually transported to Loma Linda. And that's when I started talking to Dr. Sikama. She was the most malnourished, cachectic baby that I've seen. Um, she was so significantly underweight and miserable um, that I was worried that she really would not survive or would not do well. She weighed just about seven pounds at just over three months, so she was below the average weight of a newborn baby. You could see her ribs, um, her bones, her skin was basically um, hanging off of her and was severely dehydrated and had a widespread yeast infection of her skin. Uh, in our field, children typically come to the hospital with injuries that are not completely explained by the history that's provided. Those could include abuse of head trauma, uh, burns, fractures, abdominal injuries. In those cases, a forensic pediatrician is called in to evaluate the case and to give a determination on the nature of the injuries. Typically, we respond to about 2,500 cases of child abuse in a year. Initially with COVID, um, we, there was a drastic decrease in, in the calls made to the child abuse hotline in San Bernardino County. This really happened across the entire nation because children weren't in schools and teachers are really the primary reporter of child abuse. That didn't last very long, however. Just a few months into COVID, we started to see a drastic increase in the number of egregious cases of child abuse. So I've done this for 16 years. And within, I would say, like two or three months of COVID, suddenly, whereas we would normally have maybe two cases a week of severe abuse, we were seeing six, seven cases of severe child abuse a week. Prior to the pandemic, uh, I averaged about 25 cases on my caseload. And since the pandemic started, I'm up to an average of 45 to 50 cases that I currently have assigned to me. And there are nine of us in my unit, and we all have caseloads like that. I got to the, the desk and the nurse, I told her who I was, and she was like, oh, okay, this is your little peanut right here. I look, I just see a, a swing that looked like a swing with just blankets in it. And I, I started crying immediately because she was just so small and so sickly looking. I held onto her and she held onto my finger and she just like, because that's it. She just knew from that day. She just became part of us. We were just kind of, kind of gifted her. It was probably the first time in a long time I've, I've cried at the end of a case because to think where that child was and the fact that she had no hopes of a future with her parents and to see how far she had come and that she'd really had such a loving and giving family, it just really 
one of the most rewarding experiences I've had with a case to see an outcome like that. I could tell you that 16 years ago when I started, a, a case like Paige's would have been possibly ignored. Um, people didn't understand really the, the severity of malnutrition in children. We work in a county now where we have such strong partnerships. You know, people really take it seriously and respond and do what they need to do to protect children. It's, it's unfortunate, but there's a lot of cases like hers out here. I, I really can't even put into words how important Loma Linda Children's Hospital and our forensic pediatricians are to the work that we do. This, this hospital is an essential life-giving facility. Kids, when they're given the right doctors, the right follow-up visits, the right environment to thrive in, I find can be very resilient. Children are so resilient. They can have horrible things happen to them and be so ill and yet still thrive. 